Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everybody to this pep talk this afternoon. Please mute yourself, but always show your video picture. Sign in your name, your Facebook account, or email address in the chat box. Please include names of companions attending with you. Use the chat box to ask questions and make comments while the pep talk is on. There will be group pictures at the start and end of the pep talk. Please show your face in the video. As a reminder, after the pep talk, please take the online learning kung evaluation test exercise for mastery of learning and have a perfect score to get a certificate like the one shown here. The link is, has been placed in the chat box by Abed. Another reminder, obtaining 50 OLETI certificates will entitle one mentee to a free voucher for RO Hoson medical consultation, either face-to-face -face or telemedical. Another request, please type in your feedback in the chat box during the open forum and before we adjourn. Thank you. Let's now have a group picture taking before we start the pep talk proper in two minutes. Please turn on your video, show your face. I have a patient empowerment program in which I'd like to empower the lay people or patients to take control in the management of their health. I started the pep talk on May 15, 2021 during the COVID-19 pandemic. There are three courses in the pep talk. I completed the core course on October 9, 2021. From October 2023, 2021 onwards, I've been tackling health disorder and health issue courses. This may take three years or longer depending on our enthusiasm, discipline, and perseverance. My pep talk today is entitled Philippine National Health Awareness Calendar and the empowerment objective is for the lay people to have an essential understanding on the Philippine National Health Awareness Calendar as part of their health management. The contents of this pep talk will be the following. What is a National Health Awareness Calendar and what are its objectives? What are the basis for inclusion of health topics and issues in the Philippines Health Awareness Calendar? What are the essential contents of the calendar? What are the benefits of knowing the Philippine National Health Awareness Calendar? And what are the problems? And what is the position of Dr. Hosson and his recommendations? As a disclaimer, this pep talk will contain my thoughts, perceptions, and opinions and recommendations culled from my personal experience and from the experience of other professionals. Let's go to the first topic. What is a National Health Awareness Calendar and what are its objectives? It is a calendar set up by a department or the Department or Ministry of Health of a country primarily to raise awareness among its citizenry or, a pe or its people on the important health topics or issues prevalent in the country. The other objective is to mobilize support for action from local to the national community and, some, and even to the international stage. Each country, including the Philippines, has its own set of health awareness calendar depending on its setting, prioritized needs, and goals. Each country has its own unique calendar and also its name, but there may be similarities in health topics, especially if there are international or worldwide collaboration. There are various names being used, health calendar, health awareness calendar, national health awareness calendar, Personally, I prefer Health Awareness Calendar or for the Philippines, Philippines Health Awareness Calendar. As a calendar, it consists essentially of publicly declared health days, weeks, or months throughout the year related to specific health conditions and issues. 
For example, you have a World Leprosy Day. Okay. The emphasis here is the day. So it's, also, it's on the last Sunday of January. Then Obesity Prevention and Awareness Week. Week. Last week of September. And then Breast Cancer Awareness Month for the month in the month of November. So a week, a month long awareness program. Personally, I admit that I still don't know exactly the basis for designate, designating the awareness periods in today's weeks and month. Maybe it's the extent and burden of the health issue in the community. The inclusion of topics or health issues in the department, Philippine Department of Health, Health Awareness Calendar is usually based on legislation, meaning there's a law declaring this particular day, week, or month as the awareness period. Number two, Global Awareness Day is proclaimed usually by the WHO or World Health Organization or being promoted by well-established and reputable international health organizations. And lastly, the Philippine Department of Health usually based on data on the burdens of diseases and health issues in the community. What are the essential contents of the Philippine National Health Awareness Calendar? Up to this writing, February 8, 2024, I have not seen an official 2024 DOH health calendar in the internet. Thus, I will use the 2023 calendar to give my explanation on this particular question, the essential contents. So for January, there are six events here in 2023. Examples will be in terms of month celebration or awareness program, National Demorbing Month, and then in terms of days, World Leprosy Day. In terms of week, you have the Goiter Awareness Week. So there are about six events here. For February 11, examples will be the National Cancer Awareness Month, then the uh, World Cancer Day. That's why I said there could be some repet there are repetitions here. Okay. And then in terms of week, National Rare Disease Week. For March, seven events, Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, then Philippine Digestive Health Week, and then the World Tuberculosis Day. So these are just examples. In uh, the month of April, there are six. National Hemophilia Awareness Month, then Head and Neck Consciousness Week, and then the World Malaria Day. For May, nine events, Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. Then for the week, you have the uh, International Thyroid Awareness Week. So notice there's some overlaps or repetitions. And then the World Thyroid Day. Okay. And then for June 12, so you have the examples will be Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. And then National Cancer Survival Day. And then for the week's example will be the National Poison Prevention Week. For July, you have 13 events. You have the uh, Nutrition Month. You have the uh, National Allergy Day. Then for the week, you have the Diabetes Awareness Week. For August, you have 16 Events, Family Planning Month, then National Hospital Week, and then for the days, you have the National TB Day. For September 13, Events, Generic Awareness Month, then for the week, you have the Obesity Prevention Awareness Week. And then for the days, you have the World Rabies Day. For October, you have 12 events, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and then the Bone and Joint Awareness Week, and then the um, Global Hand Washing Day. For November, there are 19 events, 
Lung Cancer Awareness Month, National Skin Disease Detection and Prevention Week, and then for the days, example will be World Diabetes Day. And then for the month of December, your seven events. You have the Firecracker Injury Prevention Month. And then you have the Ear, Nose, and Throat Consciousness Week. And then you have the Universal Healthcare Day. So a total of 131 health topics and issues in the Philippine National Health Calendar in 2023. There could be more, there could be less for the 2024 and, 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 and uh, in other years. Okay. But as, as uh, seen here, there are a lot of overlaps and repetitions. Now, what are the benefits of knowing the Philippine National Health Awareness Calendar? When they say knowing, this means being aware at least of the contents and at a higher degree of competency taking into action or implementing information gotten for the health restoration and maintenance of oneself, family at least, and of course, if puede, including the community. And also for the healthcare management of oneself and family at least, using the information such as on generic laws, field health, universal healthcare, etc. The National Health Awareness Calendar can promote patient empowerment. We all know the four Ks of the patient empowerment. Kalaman, knowledge and understanding. Kakayanan, capability, karapatan, rights, and kapangyarihan, self-determination. The other benefits of the uh, Philippine National Health Awareness Calendars in terms of patient empowerment are the following. Gaining greater control over decisions and actions affecting the health, improvement in quality in healthcare administered by physicians and other healthcare professionals because of patient centered care, improvement in health outcomes because of patient participation leading to longevity and full and contented life, and, of course, and lastly, control of medical costs because of patient centered and patient's participation. The other benefits are raising awareness, education, reducing stigma, advocacy and fundraising, targeted campaigns, collaboration and networking are being facilitated here. Of course, preventive health and inspiring actions from individuals as well as from organizations. So these are, in these slides, these are the uh, eight reasons given by Stephen Jordan. What are the problems with the Philippine National Health Awareness Calendar and what is the R.O. Hoson's position and what are his recommendations? The first question to ask is how effective is the Philippine National Health Awareness Calendar? At the moment, there is no honest to goodness study yet, but from personal observation, I guess it is not achieving its intended benefits to the maximum or to the max, but somehow helpful. Anyway, despite their imperfections, health awareness calendar can, no matter what, raise some degree of positive awareness even if done, especially if done year in, year out. The project can rally people to spread awareness and show support. Educational and fundraising events are often held at the times of the uh, awareness days, weeks, and months to create a ripple effect of positivity and empowerment for not only for of those living with the health conditions, but also their loved ones too. A downside on the health awareness calendar campaign is the associated unscrupulous marketing of services and products of some, if not a lot of healthcare institutions like hospitals and pharmaceutical companies. For example, advertising and enticing the public to use and buy services and products even if not indicated. Other problems will be are there are questions on the validity of the information being included in the awareness campaign and there is a lot of repetitions and overlaps. I, for one, am contributing to the health awareness campaign through my pep talk or patient empowerment program, which I started in May 15, 2021. 
in late 2022, I started using the new AIDS health awareness calendar in choosing a topic to do a pep talk on. I have given talks on thyroid cancer consciousness, goiter awareness, digestive health awareness, rabies awareness, which are included in the Philippine National Health Awareness Calendar. So these are evidences of my talk uh, using the uh, calendar of the DOAs, head and neck cancer awareness. Okay. This is in consonance with the DOAs health awareness calendar and the neck consciousness week in April. Another one, patient safety awareness in consonance with the patient safety awareness week in March and World Patient Safety Day in September. Goiter awareness, my contribution to the Philippine DOH of Goiter Awareness Week on the fourth week of January. In the PEP talk, I usually measure the degree of learning through an online tool, which I call Online Learning Comb Evaluation Test Exercise or ALETE, which participants would take after the PEP talk proper. Whether the participants in my PEP talk are learning or not, or whether there is a behavioral health change for the better, it is difficult to determine with accuracy. But at the very least, I have the OLETE results to assist me in the evaluation somehow. Then, since the participants are mostly my patients, in some I can observe behavioral changes for the better, if any, during follow-ups or in my continued interaction with them in social media. Some would shift from a ritualistic and maximalist mindsets to a minimalist mindset in their health management. Some would advise their relatives on what they learn from my pep talks. Despite all the imperfections and health awareness campaign, this is my stand, I believe I just have to continue to ride on the health awareness program or campaign of the Department of Health. One, to contribute to the national effort of improving the health of the Filipinos. And two, for the welfare, at least of my very own patients, to empower them on the four Ks, Kalaman, Kakayanan, Karapatan, and Kapangyarihan. Aside from attending my pep talk, I would strongly recommend all lay people to keep track of the DOH awareness calendar and participate in its program. Reasons, it is very comprehensive, although with overlaps and repetitions. Two, it is of importance in preventive health and in health restoration and maintenance. My other advice is go over the list of the health topics and issues and select which ones are relevant, relevant to your needs and to your family members and community. Learn from the information published by the DOH and by concerned organizations in the internet based on the calendar. Don't expect to learn everything in one session, just, but just keep on repeating, reading, especially year in, year out. And in the end, you will be able to master things needed for your preventive health and health restoration and maintenance programs. On my part, I will give you a list of usual health topics and issues in the DOH calendar. You then select at least five topics of interest to you and to your family. Submit this list to me. Then I will try my very best to include them in the pep talk this year as much as possible. So summary takeaway, I have tackled these uh, various topics, these con topics in this talk. What is a national health awareness calendar? Objectives, basis for inclusion of the health topics, essential contents, benefits of knowing, and then what are the problems and what is my stand my position, and my recommendations. Takeaway in relation to patient empowerment, be always in touch with reliable medical information on Philippine National Health Awareness Calendar. Knowledge is power. It gives power. Use the four Ks of patient empowerment, kalaman, kakayanan, karapatan, and kapangyarihan to gain greater control over decisions and make better decisions on the management or on the use of the Philippine National Health Awareness Calendar as part of your health management. 
And with that, I end my pep talk today on Philippine National Health Awareness Calendar. I hope I have empowered you to have an essential understanding on Philippine National Health Calendar Awareness as part of your health management. Before we go to the QA, reminder, please take the Olete. The link has been placed in the chat box. And then 50 Olete certificates will entitle one mentee to a voucher, free voucher for our OHOS on medical consultation, either face-to-face -face or telemedical. Another request, please type in your feedback in the chat box before the open forum, during the open forum, and before we adjourn. Thank you. Let's now have a group picture taking before we start the question and answer and interactions. Please turn on your video and show your face. 